positive signs about Russo-American relations are a rare thing now. CEO Elon Musk defied this trend and injected a note of optimism by saying he was exploring the possibility of opening factories in Russia. I think we're close to establishing a Tesla presence in Russia, and I think that would be great, Musk said on May 21st, speaking at a festival for students in Moscow via a video call. Elon Musk's remarks seem to have excited Russian governors who have eagerly tweeted invitations to build a Tesla factory in their regions. So, will Elon Musk be doing that? Why are Russian governors, including Dmitry Rogozin, so thirsty for Elon Musk to visit Russia? Well, we will answer all these questions in today's video, so stay tuned. Although most of Musk's achievements in space have not impressed Russian authorities, or they just pretend to not be, given that the success of Musk's SpaceX threatens the Russian monopoly of manned flights to the International Space Station. His intention to build Tesla cars in Russia have noticeably excited officials there. The Ministry of Industry and Trade invited the American billionaire to Russia to discuss the project. Meanwhile, authorities of five Russian regions, including Moscow, are already competing to provide Musk the land, mimicking the behavior of state leaders when Musk announced plans in 2014 to build a giant battery factory in the western US. Nevada won the bidding war. Musk said he participated in the new Knowledge Forum at the invitation of Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov. He answered questions for Russian students for around 40 minutes. Among other topics, he spoke about how he sees the future, proposed to build a base on the moon and a city on Mars, and he said he doesn't rule out the existence of alien life. 50 years is hard to predict, he said, answering a question about what the next 50 years will look like. Safe to say that 50 years from now will not be what we think it will be. They are fundamental size makeshifts in technology, artificial intelligence, space travel, neurocomputer interfaces, synthetic RNA and DNA. Those are big ones. SpaceX CEO also spoke about plans to travel beyond the solar system, saying that humans would need antimatter ships to reach at least 10 to 20% of the speed of light. Before going beyond the solar system, we need to be able to go to the moon and to Mars to establish a self-sustaining base on the moon and Mars. This is a critical next step, Musk said. I think it's important for the future of civilization that we become a multi-planet civilization. I'm optimistic about the future, but history shows that civilizations do not rise continuously. They rise, reach some apex, and then they fall. At some point, we will need to be in that boat. Before that happens, we need to make life multi-planetary. This is the first time in the 4.5 billion year history of Earth that's impossible to extend the life and that I think we should take advantage of that window while it is open. Relations between SpaceX's Elon Musk and Russia's space chief Dmitry Rogozin appear to be pivoting from sparring about trampolines to discussing an invitation for tea. The two aerospace giants had an exchange over Twitter following an interview Rogozin gave for CNN on Tuesday, September 7th about the future of the Russian space industry, during which Rogozin praised Musk for being an organizer of the space industry and as an investor who is not afraid to take a risk. Rogozin, the director general of Russian space agency Roscosmos, said that the millionaires in his own country prefer to invest more in yachts rather than spaceships and expressed admiration for the private United States space industry. Rogozin added he would like to invite Musk to his Russian home to be a guest of my family and discuss exploring the universe, extraterrestrial life and how we can use space to preserve life on Earth, he told CNN. Yet, relations between the chief of Roscosmos and the founder of SpaceX have not been rosy in recent months. An Ars Technica report from December shared social media photos from Rogozin of Roscosmos engineers working in the rugged Yakutia region of eastern Russia during winter, where temperatures were at a reported minus 61 degrees Fahrenheit. That's minus 52 degrees Celsius. I wonder if gentle SpaceX can work in such conditions, Rogozin mused on social media and referred to SpaceX's launch center for Starship operations in the far more balmy Boca Chica, Texas. Earlier in 2020, Musk had a schneid remark of his own in the wake of his company successfully launching the first Americans to space from US soil since the end of the space shuttle program in 2011. Under the NASA commercial crew program, 
The trampoline is working, Musk said in May 2020, of his company's Crew Dragon launch aboard the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The joke was a reference to a 2014 situation in which the United States imposed financial sanctions on several Russian officials, including Rogozin, in the wake of the Russians' internationally condemned invasion of Crimea. In 2014, the Russians were the sole source for sending Americans to space aboard their Soyuz rocket and spacecraft. The space shuttle was in retirement and commercial crew replacements from SpaceX and Boeing were still being developed. These American vehicles will take over the bulk of US astronaut launches going forward, lessening the number of times NASA requests seats from Russians and diminishing a lucrative contract for Roscosmos. Boeing Starliner spacecraft is not ready yet, amidst years of delays. What Dimitri wants Since becoming head of Roscosmos in 2018, Rogozin has had a passive-aggressive relationship with Musk. Rogozin has responded to SpaceX's success with bravado and bluster much of the time, saying the company's engineers are too gentle or their rockets and spacecrafts are not safe enough for Russian cosmonauts to ride on. At the same time, Rogozin has seen SpaceX largely destroy important revenue streams for Russia's space industry. Most notably, Crew Dragon has cut off approximately $400 million NASA paid to Roscosmos every year for crew transport services to the International Space Station. Additionally, SpaceX lobbied for a congressional mandate preventing United Launch Alliance from buying the RD-180 rocket engines from Russia. Finally, the low-cost Falcon 9 rocket has eroded the commercial launch business for the Russian Proton rocket, a former workhorse that now launches about once a year. So why play nice with Musk now? There are at least two good reasons. Firstly, if Rogozin were to get Musk to visit him in Russia, he and the country's space program could bask in its reflective glory. Musk has a deep appreciation for Soviet rocketry. He recently spent about an hour visiting with his grandson, of Sergei Korolev at SpaceX's headquarters. Musk undoubtedly would say nice things about Russia's space program during a such a visit. By meeting with Musk, Rogozin could project himself as an equal. This would be important propaganda for him in Russia's flagging space program. Some US space observers have also expressed concern about Russia's participation in the ISS after a newly arrived space station module, Naoka accidentally tilted the ISS in July due to a thruster misfire causing a spacecraft emergency. The ISS quickly recovered and the crew was in no danger, NASA said at the time. In August, both Russia and NASA emphasized the partnership and safety measures that remain strong between the two space agencies. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to see more. Until next time.